<laughs> what are you doing, Brady? What do I think of the new name? I, I think it should have been named after a, a chemist rather than an astronomer, or possibly a physicist, as no chemist would invent something so utterly pointless. Um, Where are we going? Where we'll we go going? to my office, but I've just got a couple of things to, that I have to do beforehand. Um, I got a call off you about five minutes ago, and I've just been dragged out of a research meeting with my group, and I got the call off, um, well, the text message on my iPhone, and this amazing, the, the fantastic naming of element number 112, and um, it's only taken, was it 10 years or something to name it since discovery? I thought I'd Google the new element. Um, well, I can see on the BBC webpage that it's been, ele it's been named Copernicium. And I read a little bit further down the story, and it's been named after Nicholas Copernicus, the astronomer. What's all that about? He's not a chemist. So they finally named the new element. I would have called it Copernicum. Copernicium is not easy to pronounce. And I think it's going to cause a lot of difficulty for some <coughs> chemists who are not English, or even English ones as well. But um, it's quite a strange choice because um, Copernicus was a very famous astronomer, but I'm not really sure what he had to do with chemistry. In fact, the word chemistry was only invented about 60 or 70 years after Copernicus died, at least invented in the English language. Yeah, it's quite an unusual name. It's a historical name, of course. Do you think it'll get mixed up for copper? That's an unusual question. I suppose it could, in principle, I suppose it could, yes. And I think it may cause problems for people whose who's, um, first language isn't perhaps English. I think it's nice because for the first time we have broken away from this nationalistic idea that you must name somebody from your own country if you're choosing an element. So that's really positive. On the other hand, it would have been nice to have slightly more connection with chemistry. But let's go and look at the periodic table. What's this one here, man? This so one, this one's a periodic T-shirt. Um, it was given to me. It glows in the dark, actually, if you switch off the lights. I don't know if we can see that. It sort of glows a bit. But um, very conveniently, it ends up with element 111, um, Röntgenium, which is totally unpronounceable. And now we're going to see if the pen writes, if we can put CP on here. It's not a very beautiful CP, but there it is in the right place on the periodic table. Now, CP is really not a very good symbol because most inorganic chemists like me use the symbol CP to stand for cyclopentadiene, that C5H5 ring. Now, of course, it's very unlikely that in the, when you're talking about a cyclopentadienyl compound that people will think you're talking about Copernicum, but it's probably not very good to have a symbol which could be confused. And C with a little p, with subscript, is also used to mean the specific heat, the amount of heat you need to put into something to heat it up by one degree centigrade. So there are possibilities for confusion. But of course, there's still six months for people to make um, points about this and decide whether it's a good name or not. And my feeling is that it should be called Copernicum without the letter I, because it's just so much easier to say, rolls off the tongue. So my vote is for Copernicum. Um, what about all your ties and your umbrella and all your different things with the periodic table? Do you have to get new ones now? Um, well, I always need to get new ones, and so I'm hoping that the people who make the tie, because my um, blue tie it ends with 111 as well, but there's room for more. So I hope those of you, if you're watching, if you're manufacturing ties, I'm in the market for a new one. Or you can send me one to advertise. Hello. Hello. <laughs>
what do I think of this? Um, well, it wouldn't have been an obvious choice for me, but in retrospect, I think it's fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm all for an astronomer being recognized in this way. If you look at the periodic table, there's a dozen other um, elements that are named after scientists, some very famous uh, chemists and physicists. And given that it's the International Year of Astronomy, why not name the newest element after one of our most famous astronomers? So Nicholas Copernicus, we would probably call him the father of modern day astronomy. And what he did was really profoundly change how we view our place in the universe. So it kind of makes sense, given the observations that we see around us, given common sense, that the Earth would be the center of the universe. We don't feel the Earth moving. It looks like the sun goes around the Earth. Um, but he really turned that around. By looking at the text, by making thousands of observations, he realized that it was simpler mathematically, it was a simpler explanation to put the sun at the center of all of these motions. But what's that got to do with chemistry? Not a lot, perhaps, um, but I'll, 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 I'll take any recognition that we can get. The whole idea, the whole origin of the word revolutionary comes from his discovery because he published these, um, these theories in a book called The Revolution of the Heavenly Spheres. And so it was such a profound shift in our understanding that we actually adopted that word revolutionary to mean the overthrowing of one established thing uh, for something new and radical. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, you learn something new every day. <laughs>